जीवन साधुतम सवदूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सागर ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमत भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नितनाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे वाचाकूप्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम गोदे नम हे कृष्ण गुरुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत रमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुस्ते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सो वी हैव लुक फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट सिक्स चैप्टर्स अदर देन चैप्टर टू आई लुक एट एवरी चैप्टर वन थ्री फोर फाइव एंड सिक्स based on uh, shripad yamunacharya and ramanacharya's commentary so today what we are doing is uh, you know we are looking at uh, some parts of chapter 2 since that wasn't done so i'll start with this invocation verse which is uh, by shripad yamunacharya from the geeta ta sangraha where he is summarizing chapter 2 okay so we'll start with this and then we will uh, you know go into one part of this particular chapter today okay so this is again a very beautiful summary uh, this you can appreciate the sanskrit words here it's a beautiful summary of chapter 2 he's saying here this is by yamunacharya so he says nityatma sang karme ha gochara sankhya yoga dihi dvitiye sthitadhi laksha prokta tan moha shante so he is talking about what is there in the second chapter okay so we will look at the translation and then uh, you know we will just try to understand whatever we have studied from second chapter till now uh, we will be able to easily connect and understand and appreciate this point so yamanacharya says here the knowledge of the atman and of karma yoga which has its object the eternal atman and the performance of karma without attachments and has the state of sthita pragnya as the goal is preached in the second adhyay to remove the confusion that arjuna has okay so it's again a very very uh, wonderful summary of the second chapter so what is he saying see the first thing to be focused in this verse is sankhya yoha dihi dihi means knowledge so like dhimahi or dihi it it refers to the intellect okay so the knowledge and what is the knowledge primarily in the second chapter two things sankhya and yoga Okay, we all know like two point thirty nine Bhagavad Gita, right? Where Krishna is saying, "Yesha te bhita sankhe buddhi yoga te mam shrunu." Uh, where Krishna is making it clear that the first part of the second chapter was about sankhe yoga, and now onwards he is going to talk about buddhi yoga. Okay, so so basically there is sankhe and there is yoga. These are the two main uh, parts of the knowledge of the second chapter. so that is what uh, yavanacharya is referring to sankhya yoga dihi you no know, sankhya here uh, means the knowledge of atma because sankhya means the system of counting but the whole purpose here of counting is to understand the atma so that is sankhya and yoga is karma yoga okay so that is also well understood so yoga is karma yoga and sankhya is about atma so these are the two main subjects of the second chapter gochara now what is the object of it now why is this being discussed okay so why is sankhya why is the knowledge of atma and of karma yoga being discussed so he is saying here it has two purposes one is nityatma uh, no again atma is coming you may wonder why it is coming so but the, the point here is that these topics are being discussed in order to understand that the atma is eternal hmm? because this was the first thing that krishna starts teaching in the second chapter nityatma means the atma is eternal okay and asanga karmeha and that karma should be done without attachment so this is that famous verse 2.47 karmanya vadikaraste ma phaleshu kadachan right so there are so yeah 
one second i just want to ensure that everyone is muted so that there won't be any disturbance yeah thank you i'll unmute later whenever questions come okay so the two points in the second chapter are about atma and karma yoga and the purpose is to understand atma is nitya and karma has to be done without attachments like uh, like i told you right 2.47 bhagavad gita karma nivadikara sen all that part and sthitidhi laksha and what is the goal of this karma yoga at least in the second chapter the goal of karma yoga is sthita pragnya okay to come to this level of sthita pragnya this is the goal of the second chapter prokta this has been preached in the second adhyaya tan moha shante to remove the confusion that arjuna has so again if if all of us know the second chapter which we have studied so much Uh, we can we we are able to appreciate what yamuna chari is saying here that um, we are learning about sankhya and yoga to understand that the atma is eternal and also to understand that karma yoga must be done without attachment nishkama karma yoga and the goal of all this is to reach the state of sthita pragnya okay and this is all preached in the second chapter to remove the confusion that arjuna has so this is how uh, beautifully yamuna chari is uh, summarizing the second chapter so um, what i will be doing today is i am going to take only one thing that is sthita pragnya and discuss that uh, because this sthita pragnya theme which is there uh, you know which actually comes in this last part of the second chapter is a theme which is uh, you know uh, which is seen in in some way to be like a jnana yoga part so this is the only part which is like kind of elaborating jnana Uh, and we will see why it is like that uh, because um, that is how krishna starts presenting the gita correct that one has to do karma yoga and then attain this jnana and then do yoga the yoga now means the sixth chapter dhyana yoga and in this way uh, purify the self or liberate the self or come to atma sakshatkar come to the understanding of uh, you know self realization so this is how krishna presents Uh, the second chapter of bhagavad gita correct this is how he is presenting it so before we jump into this part of sthita pragnya i wish to say here that uh, you know among all the acharyas three acharyas in india are considered as uh, very uh, important or matatraya acharya they are called uh, that is shripad shankaracharya shripad madhavacharya and shripad ramanujacharya these three are called as matatraya acharya so this is a term which you know you will come across even in cc or some other places this term comes matatraya acharya that means they had there were three different matas right mata means opinion hmm? uh, one is about dvaita advaita shankaracharya then dvaita madhavacharya and uh, ramacharya spoke about vishishta advaita okay so these three matas so this is called matatraya Uh, and interestingly uh, all of them have uh, you know so so the beauty of bhagavad gita in one sense is all of them have commented on gita as well as the vedanta sutra you know so these are these, these are the three prasthana shruti prasthana smriti prasthana and upanishadic prasthana prasthana means proof or uh, you know the way you prove things so shruti from the shruti prasthana is the vedanta sutra the smriti prasthana is the bhagavad gita and then there is upanishadic prasthana also that means you have to give evidence from the upanishad also correct so so all these three acharyas have uh, explained the things from the bhagavad gita from vedanta sutra and also from the upanishads in order to establish their opinion their matha right so so this is how it has been um and one devotee was once very nicely explaining that even though we say shankaracharya's philosophy is mayavada uh it is it is not actually that every line they say is mayavada it's not it's not something like that in fact uh, one uh, very famous scholar says that uh, even ramanujacharya and madhavacharya when they quote many things in their gita commentary or other commentary they refer to shankaracharya also because there are many things that he said which are acceptable right which are which are part of uh, uh, you know the general understanding so so that is all accepted right? so there is only just that one part of uh, you know this goal being brahman and brahmajyoti merging in brahmajyoti the advaita part of it etc 
which the Vaishnavas don't take. Otherwise, uh, you know, so many things are very, very common. And one such commonality is this Sthita Pragna. You know, this part of Sthita Pragna is something, uh, because it is, it is about the state of a Jnana Yogi. Uh, this is pretty much uh, accepted by all in a very similar fashion. Okay, so that is the section that we will spend some time discussing today, right? So, um, yeah, one second. so what I will be doing now is I will just, uh, yeah, we will just go to the verses of this Tita Pragna and we will start talking about it. So this particular, uh, you know, section comes in the last part of the second chapter. Okay, this comes in the last part of the second chapter. Because Krishna initially talks about Sankhya Yoga till 38. Then he speaks about Karma Yoga till about 52 or something. And then he mentions that the goal of all this is to become a Sthita Pragna. And then Arjuna is asking some questions about what is the Sthita Pragna and how we can understand who is Sthita Pragna. And this is where uh, Krishna's answer commences. So as usual, we are looking today at Sripad Ramanacharya's commentary. And we are looking at only those aspects which are kind of, uh, I would say, slightly different than what most of us have already learned from uh, Shila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. So, I am just focusing on the differential aspect. So, we will start with text number 55, uh, which is the description of Sthita Pragya. So, he says here, Sri Bhagavan Vacha, Prajahati Yada Kaman Sarvan Partha Manogatan Atman Yevatmana Tushtaha Sita Pragnasta Dochate. Okay, so look at the translation here. Sri Krishna replies, Say hey Arjuna, when one's mind, which is focused purely on the Jivatma, when one rejoices, feels satisfied by experiencing the blissful Jivatma alone and fully renounces all other desires except Atma and Atma Sakshatkar, which were present earlier in the mind, at that time he is referred to as a Sita Pragna. So very beautiful, uh, some, uh, this thing. Uh, Translation Ramanachari is given here. So he says that when one's mind, so I'm repeating again, when one's mind is focused purely on the Jeevatma. Now, now please try to understand uh, the verses here use Atma as Jeevatma because this is speaking about the Jnani. And the understanding here is that the Jnani who is there, his goal is to understand the Jeevatma. That means that is self realization, right? For the Jnani. So that is why. Uh, the, this whole section is spoken like that. It is spoken from the Jnani's perspective because that, that's what Krishna is said to be addressing here. Though interestingly, all these verses will apply even to a Bhakta. Okay, so, so that part is, uh, we will be talking about that. Right. So, so here, uh, uh, once again, I'll repeat the translation. Krishna is saying, Hey Arjuna, when using one's mind which is focusing purely on the Jivatma, when one rejoices, feels satisfied by experiencing the blissful Jivatma alone and fully renounces all other desires which are present earlier in the mind, at that time he is referred to as Sthita Prakhi. So this is how he is defining Sthita Prakhi. So uh, Ramanacharya has given a very nice commentary uh, to these set of verses. He says that these four verses which are there, 55, 56, 57, 58, these four verses speak about different types of Jnana Yogi. So he says that 55 speaks about the topmost Jnana Yogi, 56 about one level less, 57 about one more level less of Jnana Yogi, and uh, 58 about the last level of Jnana Yogi. So four levels of Jnana Yogi are being spoken in this part. Okay, And uh, this is the first level, which is the topmost, this is 55. And uh, this level, Ramanacharya, he calls it as um, Vashikara Samya. Vashikara Samya, this is also a term used in Patanjali Yoga Sutra for this Jnana Yogi who is perfect, topmost Jnana Yogi. And what is the characteristic of this topmost Jnana Yogi? As Krishna is saying here, that this person takes pleasure only in Atma. Okay, so here Atma, so... Uh, so one Atma is referring to the mind and the other one is referring to the Atma. That means the Jivatma itself. Right? So that is how the translation is. Okay. That means with one's mind, one is focusing only on the Jivatma. Okay. So this is so Sarvan, so such a person never takes pleasure in anything in the world. So that is what Eva. This word Eva means only. That means he is only fixed in the Jivatma. Okay. So Ramanajari and Sarvan Kaman, that means he has given up all desires except any spiritual desire. 
Sakya, except Atma and Atma Sakya. Everything else he has given up. So Ramanujari gives an example for this verse. He says, the devotee who was at the level of this verse is our uh, Prahlad Maharaj. So he says, Prahlad Maharaj was at the level of this verse. Now somebody may say, how come Prahlad Maharaj's example can be given? Because Prahlad Maharaj is a devotee. And this verse is talking about a jnani. So he says, no problem. Even though this verse is talking about a jnani, we will give example of a devotee because even a devotee can be in this stage, right? A, a devotee is also a jnani, as in he is all this is included in a devotee. So, so in that sense, a bhakta can uh, exemplify these stages of achievement. Okay, so he gives the example of Prahalad, who was perfectly in in this stage. Now, how can we understand Prahlad was in this stage? Uh, the point is, if you read the Bhagavatam, we can understand that Prahlad was not affected by anything material. Okay. And that means it is said that Prahlad was thinking of Krishna so much that even if the snakes are, uh, he's put into a pit of snakes, he's not even understanding that I am in a pit of snakes right now. Are you getting it? So if you see Prahlad is Chetana in the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, that Prahlad is not aware of all the tortures that Hirinakashipu is doing to him. Only when we read the story, we feel that, oh my God, how come uh, this fellow's father put him through such a torture? But Prahlad himself was completely unaware. It's not, not even that, you know, he was, uh, uh, he was, for example, fallen in a pit of snakes and he's desperately praying to Krishna that, you know, please save me. And no, he just spontaneously focused on uh, Lord Narayana or Vishnu or Krishna or whatever in his mind, correct? His mind was completely absorbed in Krishna without any botheration for anything material. So it's a very, very powerful example of this verse, correct? Uh, Sarvan Kaman, he had no other Kama only, Prahlad. At least in the Bhagavatam, uh, when you see the character of Prahlad, you will see it like that, right? Um, absolutely nothing. And only focused, now of course, he was not focused on the Jeevatma, he was focused on the Paramatma, but that's fine. Okay. So, so, so the point is, this verse refers to a perfect jnani, but it can refer even to a perfect devotee like Prahlad. You know, so we are taking Prahlad as example. But certainly there would be jnanis also who would have exemplified these kind of stages of achievement. But though as devotees, you know, we may not know about them or we may not give their example so much. But that is what actually Krishna is referring to in this verse. Okay, so we need to understand this. So Krishna is talking about the topmost jnani in this verse. Okay, so and as I began by saying that uh, these are verses which are accepted by everybody the way it is, right? Whether you are a Vaishnava or whether you are a Advaitavadi, uh, the verse is very clear. The verse is as clear as the sun. So there is, uh, if you use the Sanskrit itself, it is very, very clear what is being said. Yeah, there is no confusion. But somebody may say, is it possible for everybody to be such a big jnani like Prahlad? Because Prahlad, my God, what a stage this is. Correct? Nothing is aware, is not aware of anything. Only of Krishna is thinking, of course, in this case, the jnani is thinking only of the jivatma. Is it possible to have such a level of achievement? Okay? So that is why, see, Krishna also, that's why, you know, we always say in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita is a book of various levels. Krishna is not just giving the topmost level and saying that either you come there or you are nowhere. Okay, so Krishna gives other levels also. So Ramanucharya says that in the next verse, in the 56th verse, Krishna is speaking of the second level of Jnana Yuga. Okay, so let's see that verse. Dukhe shanat vibhna mana sukesh vikata spraha vita raga bhaya krota sthita dhir muni ruchate. Okay, now I'll read this verse, uh, the translation which has been given here. One whose mind is undisturbed, anudvigna manaha, undisturbed, when reasons for sorrow strike, Dukkeshu, uh, he who does not crave or have thirst to enjoy the pleasures, when reasons for pleasure come, okay, he who is free from attachment, desire for things to be attained, fear caused by perception of impending sorrowful event and anger aimed at an entity which is responsible for the happening of the sorrowful event, he who has his mind attached only on the Jivatma is called as Stita Prajna. So this is also definition of Stita Prajna. Okay. But Ramanacharya beautifully explains here that this is the second level of Jnana Yogi. And he has given a term for this. He calls it Ekendriya Samya. Ekendriya means mind. Okay. Mind is that Ekendriya. That means sense. And that has been controlled. 
Now, now we have to understand why we are calling it second stage. So please try to appreciate that in the previous stage, which we read, you know, the 55th verse, which we gave example of Prahlad Maharaj, there that person was not even conscious of material things, as I said, right? Prahlad is not even conscious. He's put into a pit of snakes. He's put into fire. He's not even conscious of it. We are conscious when we read the story. He is not. But in this verse, we are talking about someone who understands that Sukha Dukkha has come. Okay, so that is what is being said. He understands. So, so in this verse, this yogi who is a jnana yogi, he knows that currently Dukkha is coming in my life. Some sickness has come. My child is not well. My my some some financial problem in the house. He understands that dukkha is coming. It's not that he's not. so. Please remember in the previous verse, uh, like Prahlad, if you are, then you will not even understand that dukkha is coming. But in this place, he has understood that dukkha is coming, but he is not affected by it. That's the point. Okay, so so I, I hope you can appreciate that this is one level less than the previous stage. Where you are not even aware that Dukkha or Sukha is coming, but now you are aware, but then it's not affecting you. So now if you see the verse again, you'll be able to appreciate, right? One whose mind is undisturbed, Anudvitna, his mind is not affected. Okay? Dukkha issue. That means what? Dukkha is coming. He's understanding that Dukkha is coming. Okay? Similarly, Sukha is also coming. He's understanding Sukha Rabi. You know, lot of money is coming, lot of food is coming. You know, good health is there. Everything is nice. He understands that. But mind is not disturbed. Anudvigna manana. He is not affected by it. And, and the other part is, right? Uh, Vita Raga Bayakrodha. Vita means to give up. Raga Bayakrodha. Very nice uh, definition he is giving. Raga means he says, is uh, de desiring something for the future. It's called as Raga. Baya means futuristic dukkha. So, raga is defined as futuristic sukha. Bhaya is defined as futuristic dukkha. And krodha is when something undesirable happens uh, to us and uh, we are angry towards that person. Then that is called as krodha. Okay. So, so, so like that. So, so, basically, I mean, if you go into the Sanskrit, krodha can never be to yourself. I mean, you cannot say that I have krodha on myself. So, for that, there is another term in Sanskrit called nirvedam. I mean, when you are angry with yourself for your own foolishness, it, it is not technically anger, it is called nirvedam. And you cannot be angry on an inanimate object like a stone or a thorn. Okay, suppose a stone strikes you or something, right? Or a thorn goes in your feet, then it's not called krodha. So, krodha is a term used in Sanskrit to specifically address some other person who is, you know, giving you trouble and you wish something bad for that person or something like that. Right? So, in this verse, if you see, so this is Ekendriya Samya, correct? Previously, we called it Vashikara Samya, now this is Ekendriya Samya. Now, you see clearly, we have come one level down. Now, if you look at the next verse, na, you will be able to appreciate that Krishna is understanding that name. We have to give some more levels of Jnana Yuga. So, now Krishna is going to the 57th verse, okay, where he is giving the third level of Jnana Yuga. Please appreciate this verse. Yes, Sarvatra, Nabisneha, Tattat, Prapya, Shubha, Shubham, Nabi, Nandati, Nadveshti, Tasya, Pragna, Pratishtita. So I'll read the translation and discuss. The one who is unattached, indifferent to all things which are likable, and after attaining all those good and bad things, neither rejoices much on attaining the good, nor feels too disappointed, sorrowful on attaining the bad. Such a person's intellect is firm, and he is also called as Sthita Pragna. Okay, so now Krishna is giving the third level of Sthita Pragna, which is called as Vyatireka Samya. This is the third level of Sthita This is also Jnana Yogi, but third level Jnana Yogi. And what is his characteristic? His characteristic means he, he not only understands that Sukha Dukkha has come, but he doesn't rejoice too much. Okay, so the main part in this verse is Nabhinandati. Nabhinandati means bahut jada ho kutta nahi hai. That means not that happiness comes, then he perceives happiness also. Now please try to understand in the previous verse, that person happiness doesn't affect him at all. Distress doesn't affect him. But now this person distress is going to affect him. Something bad happens in life, some disease happens, some hospitalization happens, some money loss happens, anything happens. He does feel disappointed, but not too disappointed. Okay, that is, the, so the focus in this verse is Nabhinandati Nadveshti. So that Abhi, Abhi matlab too much. Too much happiness, too much distress is not undergoing. 
Okay, so that is why it is said that yogi means to not be too affected by anything that happens. Okay, we will get affected, but still it is at a moderate level. Okay, so this is third level. Okay, so you are able to appreciate now. We are coming slowly down. Okay, from the previous two levels. Okay, Navi Nandati Nadveshti Tasya Pragya Pratishtita. Such a person is also Pragya Pratishtita. He is also there. Because too much is not getting affected. Okay, so, so like that. Somebody may say even this is too much. What do you mean by too much I am not affected? I am going to be affected a lot. So Krishna has one more level which is called as Yatamana Samyam. And that is the fourth level of Jnana Yogi. Okay. Uh, yatamana Samyam. Yatamana Samyam. So, so let's read the verse. This is text number 58. Yada Samharate Chayam Purumongani Vasarvashaha Indriyan Indriyar Tebhyas Tasya Prajna Pratishkuta. Look at what Krishna is saying. When this Atma Jnani withdraws or restrains the senses which are attempting to experience the sense objects from the sense objects like sound, touch, color, taste and smell fully in all aspects just like a tortoise withdraws all its limbs when it encounters danger such a person's intellect is firm and he is also called as Sthita Prajna. So now Krishna is talking about the fourth level of Jnana Yoga. And what is this characteristic of the fourth level of Jnana Yogi? This fourth level of Jnana Yogi, Krishna is saying, he is like the tortoise. That means he pulls his senses from sense object. Okay, that means when there is something that is attracting him too much, he restrains. To withdraw his senses, correct? He pulls. So he says he pulls all, not just one sense, since that is useless. Okay, so Ramarujari says, if you pull only one sense and you give the other four senses engaged, then that is useless. So that is why Krishna uses this word Sarvashaha. Sarvashaha matala, sabi sense ko pashme rekta, tortoise jaisa. Just like a tortoise will pull all its limbs and head inside. It has four legs and one head, right? It is not that it will say, let me keep my head outside and only my legs I will pull in. No, it doesn't do that. Everything, all five he pulls inside. So similarly here, this Jnani who is there, he will pull all the senses, Sarvashaha. And in this way, somebody is able to do this much also. He is also called as a Jnana Yogi. I mean, we can really appreciate, uh, you know, this greatness of Krishna. How he has given so many levels, right, for everybody. He is not, Krishna is such an amazing personality. He is not saying that, hey, look, you know, you are, I am going to accept you only if... Uh, uh, or I'm going to give just one definition of success. He has given multiple, multiple definitions of success. And this is something very, very special about the Bhagavad Gita. All right, you will see this everywhere. So as we saw in these four verses that we saw from 55 to 58, Krishna has spoken about four levels of Jnana Yogi. First, he's spoken about the topmost Jnana Yogi. We'll just revise for the benefit of those who joined uh, just now as well. So, the first verse, 55th verse, Prajahati Yada Kaman, Krishna is talking wow. about someone, Jnana Yogi, who has completely given up all sense enjoyment, is not even aware of what is happening around him materially. Okay, so you will hear of such yogis time to time. They are not even aware of anything material happening to them. For that, Ramanujari gave the example of Prahlad Maharaj. Okay, somebody may say this is too much. So, the next level. So, that was... Uh, Right, so 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 all these things have their uh, names also. First was Vashikara Samya, and in 56th verse, Ekendriya Samya. In Ekendriya Samya, what did Krishna say? Krishna said, Dukya Shonut Vibhnamana. That means happiness is coming, distress is coming, but still this person is not affected. So that means he understands happiness and distress aya. In the previous stage, even that was not aware. So this is called as Ekendriya Samya, where the mind is under check. Okay, and the third level, 57th verse, Nabhinandati Nadveshti. This person, not only he understands that happiness and distress is coming and he is enjoying that happiness also and he is suffering the distress also, but not too much. You know, everything is moderate. Okay, so, so there is enjoyment. He is feeling pleasure, but that pleasure is not out of proportion. It's controlled. It is, it is under check. Okay, similarly, the distress also. He doesn't allow himself to become too distressed and too disappointed. So that is also considered a yogi. And the final stage, Krishna said is, so final stage is, Yatamana Samya, where he is like the tortoise. He withdraws all the senses. So, so this he is doing more prayasa. Okay, so in the previous one, at least, uh, you know, he was more sober. But here, in the final stage of the, that means the lowest of the stages, the Jnana Yogi, he has to do more effort 
to keep the senses under control right otherwise you just carry it away so in this way four levels of jnana yogi have been discussed okay so this is the first part of the second chapter now please first part of the second chapter of this section stita prajna now please uh, all of you also try to appreciate that uh, these verses will apply to a devotee as well okay so that's why when we read proper purports or something where you know these verses are spoken in the context of a vaishnava that's fine that's perfectly fine right because they apply that but fundamentally they are said to be talking about a jnana yogi so that is how these verses are right now 59 to 61 krishna is talking how to achieve this jnana yogi because somebody may say na are how to become such a jnana yogi how to achieve such a stage so krishna is giving that method also so let's look at 59 vishaya vinivartante niraharase dehinah rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate okay so we'll see the translation for a person who has uh, attempted to withdraw the senses from experiencing the sense objects the sense objects get turned away without being enjoyed except the desire for experiencing them that remains in the person's mind such a person's desire to enjoy the sense object who ceases to exist after seeing the great blissful nature of the jivatma okay so it's it's in one way it's a, it's a very beautiful verse so we so in, in in so in 59 and 60 what krishna is basically talking is how this jnana is very tough to achieve very tough okay so in this verse 59th verse he is saying that see jnana yoga means to control the senses and to think of atma okay so because if you have to always be situated in the atma tattva atma you know always meditating on the atma etc then you cannot be drawn away by the senses right it's not that the senses are dragging you anywhere so that doesn't work okay so what krishna is saying is you will have to do nirahara nirahara means usko aahar nahi dena chahiye that means you cannot be food to the senses to enjoy that is why the last stage of the jnana yogi was compared to a tortoise because that is minimum expectation from a jnana yogi correct that is the minimum expectation that is senses are under check because if that is also not there then he is not a yogi only jnana yogi he is not for sure okay so krishna is saying here you have to do nirahara so he is saying when you do nirahara then okay you may not do the enjoyment externally but the desire will keep remaining you know so the desire rasavarjam rasopyasya the desire will go when will it go param drishtva nivartate so here param drishtva nivartate actually ramanujari uses it to say that only when he has experienced the blissful nature of the atma that means when he is actually situated in atma only then his desire also will go till then desire will remain so please try to understand krishna is saying that this is the path of jnana yoga you will not enjoy but the desire will be there until you have tasted the uh, blissful nature of atma it's not saying till then it will not go okay so that atma swarupa you need that higher taste right so so in the case of ramanacharya we know the story of danurdas right he was very much attracted to hemambal and finally tripad uh, ramanacharya gives him a very divine darshan of ranganath and when he has that then he is he is kind of freed from that attraction to him ambar so so that story i'm sure all of us know on that so that is like that param drishta but that is a devotee example correct right? that is for a vaishnava here krishna is actually talking even for a jnani the same thing he has to experience param drishta only then he will now then uh, somebody may say that okay so so what is the difficulty in controlling the senses so that krishna is speaking in the next verse okay so this is continuation of this उट So saying here that see, the problem is that uh, this person who is trying hard for atma sakshatkar the senses are such that it will force the mind to go towards the senses. Okay, so so please try to understand what has happened in the fifty ninth verse. Krishna is saying that without seeing atma, you cannot control your desires. That's what he said, right? Param drishtva nivartate. I mean, until you have atma sakshatkar, you cannot control your desires. And in sixtieth verse, he is saying, 
for controlling desires is very difficult for someone who has not seen the atma are you getting are you would appreciate this point so this is something which is technically called anyonya ashraya anyonya ashraya means 59 and 60 are dependent on each other okay so it is just like a jyotisha there was one man who wanted to you know who had some problem the mental disease he had so his parents took his horoscope to a jyotish to ask when will this man's mental disease be cured so the jyotish said that his madness will be cured only when he gets married okay so the jyotish says that but then when this boys party they approach some girl for marriage proposal the girls party says let first let his madness be cured then only the marriage can happen are you getting it so this fellow has got stuck on one hand he is having some madness and the jyotisha says that the only solution for his madness is to get married but any girl who the family approaches says that uh, we will give our daughter only be cured from that so they don't want to take a risk right so this is called anyonya ashray right so in one verse krishna is saying that as long as one has not seen the atma there will be a desire and then he is saying that uh, but uh, one who has not seen the atma controlling sense is very difficult so basically it seems that you are stuck how will you you know become free from this attachment to sense object correct so to break this deadlock to break this deadlock ramanujare says krishna is speaking the 61st verse so this is going to break that deadlock तानि सर्वाणि संयम्य युक्त आसीत मत्परः वशेहि अस्येन्द्रियाणि तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता ओके बाय विड्रॉइंग ऑल द सेंसेस एंड एम्प्लॉइंग देम टुवर्ड्स माय डिवाइन फॉर्म ओके मत्परः मे ही लिव फोकसिंग हिज माइंड ऑन मी हु ही हु सेंसेस हैव कम अंडर कंट्रोल विल अटेन द फर्म एस्टैब्लिशमेंट ऑफ ज्ञानम अबाउट जीवात्म सो नाउ कृष्ण हैज ब्रोकन द डेडलॉक बाय ब्रिंगिंग हिम इनटू द इक्वेशन Okay, by saying that if you focus on me, if you meditate on me, then you can get this problem solved. So somebody may say, "Arey, we are talking about jnana yoga. Krishna ka aage yaha par." So Ramana Jari says, "See, this whole section is jnana yoga only. But even jnanis use bhakti in their process. See, this is the beauty of bhakti that every other person also has to use bhakta bhakti for their progress." but bhakti is kind of superior to all but these people use bhakti so they are not a quote and quote technically bhakta here right so though if you only look at this verse as a stand alone verse it looks like a verse that is talking about bhakti only right and rightly so because it is bhakti because what is krishna saying tani sarvani sanyamya you withdraw all the senses yukta asita matparah you focus your senses on me he says which means it has become bhakti in fact if you read proper purport for this particular verse text number 2.61 then you will understand very clearly that this is actually bhakti but though it is bhakti the section is talking about a jnani okay who is using bhakti in order to break the deadlock of his desires right which are kind of forcing him to enjoy objects in order to escape from that he is using bhakti krishna is see krishna is so great that this person uh, is a jnani only he is quote and quote not a bhakta but even to such a person he is giving some amount of bhakti as a tool uh, you know in his path correct so so that is how we will see this right so the anyonya ashraya gets resolved you know so till now there was this anyonya ashraya right there was that mutual dependence uh, or what had uh, we had how to the senses uh, as long as you are not liberated your senses are going to attract you here and there and uh, you know uh, it, the, the, the mind cannot come under control and it will go it will get lost so on but, but now it is dead that deadlock has been resolved okay now in the next section what krishna says is so somebody may say some jnani may say i am not interested in meditating on krishna nahi hoga mere se i don't want to do this so if somebody refuses 2.61 saying that i am not interested in krishna per se i don't want to focus on krishna then krishna says that it will become very difficult for such people Okay, and that is what he is now going to speak in these famous verses, which we all know. Here, actually, I'll be speaking very, very briefly because uh, the commentary is pretty same everywhere. So I'm not going to touch on this. Jaya to vishyan purse sandeshte shupa jaya te sanga sanjaya te kama ha kama krodo vijaya te. So what is now Krishna doing? Krishna is not speaking about that jnani yogi who is not meditating on Krishna. 
he is chosen not to. So what will happen to him? For such a person who does not meditate on Krishna. So why is the background? Because 61 was just before, no? so after 61, 62. Whose mind is contemplating for sense objects, there arises attachment for <coughs> sense objects. From that attachment arises intense desire to experience those sense objects. <coughs> From this intense desire will arise anger. I mean, this is something that all of us can see, you know, that if we don't, as long as we don't desire anything, it doesn't affect us. But once you start focusing on a sense object, you will see that it has that power, that is Maya Shakti. It has that power to pull us. Okay, and this is something that all of us experience also in our repeated uh, failures to control our mind and senses. But uh, here Krishna is anyway talking specifically about this Jnana Yogi. He doesn't focus on Krishna. And of course, we can take it for us as well because as devotees, even if we don't do that, we also land in the same trouble. Correct? So, there's nothing more to speak in this verse. So, it's a very, uh, so this verse commentary is pretty same everywhere. Prodhatva, next verse. Prodhatva vidi sammoha, sammoha spriti vibrama, spriti pramashat buddhinasha, buddhinasha admanashati. From such anger arises loss of discrimination between what should be done and what should not, what is right and what is wrong. And from that loss of discrimination arises loss of memory of the goal of Atma Sakshatar. So, Smriti Pramshad is talking about, you know, you've forgotten the goal only. Atma Sakshatar, your life goal, you've forgotten. The loss of such memory leads to destruction of the resolve to pursue the means to Atma Sakshatar, Uddhi Nasha. Correct? And from such destruction of resolve, one gets ruined. Pranashyati. Right? He remains in samsara. He's gone. So beautiful uh, analysis of what happens, one who cannot. Then somebody says, then what happens if somebody who follows 2.61, for that there is 64 and 65, where Krishna is talking, okay, if you follow, then what you get, right? Raga dvesha vimukta istu vishyan indriyeshtara atma vishya vidyatma prasadam adhigachati. Disregarding the sense objects using the senses that are devoid of likes and dislikes by my grace, uh, received by meditating on me. So Krishna is talking now in 64 about those who follow 61 and are under his full control. One who has made his mind obedient to him attains the purity of a mind that is required for the next step of Atma Saksha. So Krishna is making it so in this whole section the 2.61 is a very, very pivotal verse. Everything is revolving around it. Correct? So that becomes a means for Jnana Yogi and if he doesn't do that, something happens and if he follows it, then he benefits. He goes ahead in life. And the same theme continues in the next 65th verse as well. Prasade sarva dukkana mahani rasyo pajayate prasanna chete sarkhyasu buddhi pariyavatishtate. Of this person, when purity of mind is attained, the destruction of all worldly sorrows happens. For so such a person with pure, calm, blissful mind, knowledge of jivatma very soon becomes firmly established. So such a person progresses. So you will see that jnanis also use uh, meditating on the Lord as a tool for their advancement. Because if they don't do that, they will not progress much. They will need it. right? So, Bhakti is used by everyone. This is something that we always discuss. Okay. Then again, Krishna is once again saying, okay, when you cannot control your senses, what happens? You know, Krishna is again going back. So, please try to understand. In verse 61, Krishna spoke about the way proposed by him. 62, 63, one who doesn't follow that, what happens? 64, 65, one who follows how he gets the Lord's mercy. 66, again the Lord is saying, one who doesn't follow, doesn't get anything. Okay, so he's again going back to that previous thing. Nasti buddhira yuktasya nacha yuktasya bhavara nacha bhavayata shanti ashanta sikhtasya Of the one who has not used his mind for meditating on me, that is Krishna, the knowledge of Jivatma is not internalized. It doesn't get solid. When such knowledge of Jivatma is not internalized, the meditation of the, on the Jivatma will not happen. He cannot meditate well. For one who is unable to meditate on the Jivatma, the cessation of desires for sense object will not happen. Shanti. His desire will not become Shanta. For such a person who has not attained the cessation of desires for sense objects, how can there be real happiness? Which is attained only by realizing Jivatma. Are you able to see? The beautiful uh, way in which you know that whole series of verses get connected. It's a classic explanation. Right? And then finally in 67, this whole series is concluding where Krishna is saying why he doesn't get anything. Indriyanam charatam yen manon vidiyate tadasyaharati prajnam vayur navam mambasi. Krishna is saying the real issue is that the mind which gets employed by the person in going after the senses which are freely experiencing sensual objects, such a mind will carry away elsewhere the person's knowledge away from the jivatma 
just like how the strong wind which is blowing in the opposite direction will turn away the boat on the ocean uh, in a direction opposite to its intended course it's a beautiful way in which uh, you know that entire section is complete okay so so please uh, right remember uh, the 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 whole the, the flow is just so beautiful and then in 68 actually krishna concludes this section तस्मा महाबाहो निग्रहितानि सर्वशाइंद्रियाग 55 to 58 krishna spoke about four levels of jnana yoga in descending order then 59 to 61 krishna said how you can attain jnana yoga and for that the crucial verse was 61 focus on krishna 62 to 63 what happens if you don't 64 65 what happens if you do and 66 once again krishna is saying that one who doesn't follow doesn't get anything and in 67 he is saying it is just because his mind carries him away and in 68 he says the person who does it he gets fixed in the jivatma in this way very beautifully krishna has summarized the whole process of jnana yoga also he is not only said the four types of jnana yogi he has summarized how you can become such a jnana yogi now in the final section of this chapter which is the last theme of discussion krishna is now going to talk about the benefit that the jnana yogi gets so benefit bhi hona chahiye na one is he spoke about four states of jnana yoga what are the benefits of that and that is what krishna is talking about uh, in the so so this is again the last part is connected to the four stages of jnana yoga so we will again connect it so we will have to spend a little time on this and then we will end today's discussion look at 69 towards yani sha sarva bhutanam tasyam jagrati sayami yasyam jagrati bhutani sa nisha pashyato mune hai so ramanujare says this verse krishna is talking about the greatness of 2.55 in 2.55 krishna had said right prajahati yada kamavan sarvan partha manogata natpani evatmana tushta sthita prakshta dochate vashikara samya about pralad maharaj about that example about how the topmost jnani yogi he is he is not even aware of what is happening around him he has given up everything material and he is simply focused on atma or paramatma for a devotee So, so that is the topmost jnana yogi which krishna has spoken the such a person's greatness is spoken here what is the greatness of that 2.55 for such a person the knowledge of jivatma which is like the night for all living beings who are after sensual pleasures that same knowledge regarding jivatma jnana yogi who has controlled his senses remains awake because he experiences the jivatma in which knowledge about sensory pleasures the living beings are fully awake because they are going behind sensory pleasures that knowledge of sensory pleasures is like night dark and irrelevant for a jnani yogi who can behold uh, the jivatma and is always contemplating on the jivatma so this whole verse which is there davanjare says that this this is talking about that vishesha gnana that in this person he is he is not perceiving only night matlab usko samajh hi nahi raha hai ki like this also people can be that means common people what things they do the 2.55 somebody like pralad maharaj if you ask him he will say are aisa bhi kai kar sakta hai kya how can such a person be like this he is completely oblivious to it okay so that is how this verse is connected to 2.55 bhagavad gita he says now the next verse if you remember 2.56 dukkha shunud vignamana sukha shut vigatas prada that means sukha dukkha are coming he understand sukha dukkha is coming but he is not affected by it anud vignamana correct that about that krishna is speaking in the next verse what is that verse apurya manam achala pratishtam samudra map pravishanti yatva tatvat kamayam pravishanti sarve sashanti map noti na kama kam see see look at this now now how that connection is perfect we will see what is this verse talking about this verse is talking about waters entering the river entering the ocean so the ocean understands river is coming into me but still he is not affected so similarly this verse is talking about that second level of jnana yogi who understands that pleasure and pain are coming to me but he is not affected in the, the previous days he is not even aware 
इट इज लाइक नाइट फॉर हिम नाइट मतलब क्या उसको मालूम ही नहीं कि ऐसा हो रहा है इज जस्ट इज नॉट कॉन्शियस ओनली अबाउट सच प्रॉब्लम करेक्ट बट नाउ वी आर अबाउट द नेक्स्ट लेवल करेक्ट सो सो लुक एट द ट्रांसलेशन जस्ट एज द वॉटर फ्रॉम रिवर एंटर्स द ओशन which is naturally full by itself and remains fixed without increasing or decreasing in volume or getting disturbed in the same manner when all the sense objects go through or become known to a person who has fully restrained his senses and is focused on the jiva atma and remains undisturbed such a person attains the peace of having obtained freedom from experiencing sensual pleasures those who are disturbed by the need to enjoy the sense object cannot attain this shanti so so please remember clearly this verse ramanujarya says is talking about ekendra samnya that means about this dukkeshun vignamana person because in this stage what is happening he understands things are coming ocean is not controlling what is coming in but ocean knows river is coming but still ocean is not increasing or decreasing in size so similarly this yogi is jnana yogi is fixed he knows sukha dukkha is like the river coming in though the rivers are coming in he is not getting affected so this is the 70th verse now in the next verse he says this is about the final two stages okay so we'll read this verse vihaya kama nisarban puman charit nispraha nirmamo nirahankara sashanti madhi gachati okay so this is about which this is about so ramanujare said this verse 71st verse is about both the levels we do level baki hai na 57 and 58 in 57 krishna had spoken about which jnana yogi about that jnana yogi who doesn't enjoy too much or doesn't suffer too much na bilandati na dvishti and in 58 krishna spoke about the jnana yogi who is like a tortoise who consciously struggles hard and withdraws the senses okay so krishna is saying that this uh, ramanujare says this verse is talking about those two people okay so how we will see how let's see the translation that person who after giving up all sensory pleasures and lives without having any desire for such sense objects without having any sense of ownership towards such sense objects and not ahankar okay such a person attains the peace of having obtained freedom from experiencing sensory pleasure so please try to understand this verse is talking about someone who is more consciously giving up correct these attachments vihaya kama yas sarvan de usko maloom hai ki ye problem hai mere mein but he is working hard to give up these sensory pleasures uman sar nirmamo nirahankar he is giving up sense of proprietor so he is working hard here this jnani yogi is working hard the previous levels of jnana yogi they it was more seamless for them that was obviously by lifetimes of practice they achieved that but this level of jnana yogi is, has to work a little more hard to you know maintain his position and that is what being said here and the final verse is about the benefit for all these jnana yogis yesha brahmi stiti parta nainam prapte vimuchyati stitvasyam antakale bi brahma nirvanam richati this is this is considered the benefit for the culmination of this jnana yoga okay so if, those of us who remember reading chila propad's uh, translation here he uses uh, the term that uh, such a person enters the spiritual kingdom okay, that is used by chila propad here for this translation ramanacharya he uses the translation brahma nirvanam as saying such a person attains the jivatma who is pleasure personified so somebody may say why this difference so the difference is obviously because ramanacharya is just confining his explanations to the section itself and the section is about a jnana yogi okay but you could look at this whole thing from a bhakta perspective also because it is all true for a bhakta also okay so the bhakta also is going to get these benefits so that is why brahma nirvanam richati can be spoken as spiritual abode okay but for, as a section perspective it is considered for a jnana yogi so that is why such a translation here so i am just making this point clear so that we understand why the difference is there between different explanation so like look at the translation o partha this practice of karma without any attachments of worldly fruits please remember huh? this is about because this whole chapter initially nishkama karma yoga was spoken right preceded by knowledge of the true nature of atma because second chapter first part of the second chapter was about the knowledge of atma second part of the second chapter was about karma yoga this 2.47 and all that right karma nivadikar is the ma phalita and third part is this the prajna so so the whole thing was that leads to the attainment of jivatma through jnana yoga having attained this stage of performance of disinterested action disinterested means disinterested action means this nishkama karma yoga that means you are doing an action without interest in the fruit that is why he is calling it as disinterested action this person will not get bewildered due to samsara by attaining this state at, at 
at least in the last phase of one's life, antakale api, one can attain the jivatma who is pleasure person. So, Brahma Nirvana Vichati. The Jnana Yogi attains the Atma. That means he, he becomes self-realized, so to speak, right? He, he attains self-realization. So, this is how Krishna talks about the Sthita Prajna, right? So, we are ending this and uh, just, uh, you know, before I go ahead, once more, uh, we will just very quickly recap the entire, uh, you know, topic for today. And then we will see, uh, we'll take some questions. So, we started by talking about the summary of the second chapter of uh, Bhagavad Gita as given by Sripad Yamunacharya. Uh, looking at that verse once again. Nityatma Sangha Karme Hagochara Sankhya Yoga Dihi Dutiye Stitha Dhi Laksha Prokta Tanmoha Shante. The knowledge of the Atma and of Karma Yoga, which has its objects, the eternal Atman and the performance of Karma without attachment, and as a state of Sita Prajna, as the goal is preached in the second Adhyay to remove the confusion that Arjuna has. Okay, it's so a very nice summary of Sripadimanacharya, where he's saying that uh, you know, the whole goal of the second chapter is Sankhya and Yoga. Okay. And uh, leading to Sthita Pragna, uh, which is there to remove the confusion that Arjuna has. Of course, we know that Arjuna again got confused. And because of it, he opened the third chapter. And that part, of course, we have discussed in great detail. Correct? So, we have seen all that. So, I, I just wish to end by again reiterating the point that I mentioned in the beginning itself. That uh, all the Acharyas who, uh, you know, Sripad Ramanacharya, Yamunacharya, uh, sorry, Ramanacharya, Madhu Acharya and Shankaracharya, they are considered as Matatrayacharya, you know, who have three different opinions. But though they have three different opinions, all of them have commented on three important scriptures. One is the Bhagavad Gita, which is Smriti Prasthana, Shruti Prasthana, which is Vedanta Sutra, and also the Upanishadic Prasthana. They have commented on the Upanishads. Uh, so though they may have some differences, on many points they all agree. And this part of Bhagavad Gita that we saw today, this is one part where everybody has a similar explanation. Because this part is talking about a Jnana Yogi. Because Krishna is also talking about Jnana Yogi. He's talking about somebody who can come to Atma level. You know, that level of Atma realization. Atma Sakshatra. Right? Any quick question or comment before we end? Anybody with a raise of hand? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram. Okay, there's no question, we can stop. I'll just wait for... Okay, yeah, Saragrai Prabhu, and yeah. So, yeah Saragrai Prabhu, please go ahead. I was allowed you to unmute. Go ahead. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Yes. Uh, Prabhu, it was very nice class. I'm like, so much... Uh, I'm like, it was so nice to hear the whole flow. So, that was very nice. Uh, Prabhu, I'm mean, like, one question... Uh, Actually, to two questions. One was related. I'm like you for the first level. You mentioned about uh, uh, Prahlad Maharaj, right? Yeah. So, are there any other uh, ones uh, mentioned? And second thing, Prabhuji, I mean, like in general, I'm like you took, like you skipped the second chapter uh, and then moved on, like first started with the third and rest. So, was there any uh, reason behind it? Maybe, maybe you had explained, but I didn't. Know. No, no, no. Somehow I was not prepared of the second chapter. At that time, I was studying the third chapter, so I started with that. But I will be covering parts of the second chapter that we missed out. So, uh, but, but it's very beautiful. There are some parts of Ramanujara's commentary of Karma Yoga in second chapter which are too good. We will be doing that next time. Uh, I'm not going to leave that part, so we will do it. Uh, anyway, you know, as devotees, we can, like Prabhupada would say, you can enjoy from any part of the scripture or it's like a sweet. You enjoy from anywhere and it is very tasty. So, uh, so we will be doing that and later we will do from 7th chapter onwards in sequence. Uh, but uh, yeah, so coming to the first part, yes, 2.55. Prajahati yada kaman sarvan patmanu gatan atman yeva atmana tushta sita prajnisi sanya. Where the mind is focused so much that one is not even aware of materialistic things. Okay, so it is a fact that many jnana yogis also attain such stages of samadhi which we hear also many times. Okay, so uh, generally Vaishnavacharyas have not quoted that because they like to quote devotees. And among devotees, uh, you know, the perfect bhakta is actually Prahlad because in that childhood period of his, the bhakti that he shows, the focus that he shows on Supreme Lord Narayana without being distracted up by 
anything else in the world very difficult to see that anywhere else right i mean in action like that so so that's why ramanujare gives only one example of pralad maharaj but since you asked i was thinking about it there are so many jnani yogis also you will see like uh, though we generally don't discuss so much about them because you know they don't belong to our sampradaya etc or you know because we coming from a vaishnava sampradaya but if you but if you actually read stories about the sant jnaneshwar and people like that you know the kind of uh, focus they had in their samadhi etc uh, though they were in quote and quote vaishnava per se but uh, certainly it illustrates the teachings of such verses only correct otherwise they couldn't have been like that where this completely you know not touched by anything you know not uh, no no material desire no not affected by anything on the mind and just focused on atma prakriti so obviously when krishna is speaking like this there are so many people would have been like that uh, but generally we rely on acharyas to tell us some examples but since you ask uh, based on my own understanding i just spoke that yes certainly we could have given uh, i mean the, the, because this verse is actually talking about a jnani yogi jnani yogis also would have depicted such stages where they are not aware of anything and you will see that with so many other devotees as well where they are just not affected at all by any suffering or they are not even aware of what is happening right they are in a in a state of complete bliss and transcendence which we see throughout right i mean you may even see in chaitanya charitamrita haridas sapura you can see examples like that yes yes prabhu hari bol yeah thank you yeah uh, who is uh, Okay, yeah. Dinamandu Chaitanya Prabhu, please go ahead. I'll just ask you to unmute. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hello. Hello. Uh, Prabhu, this uh, point about Apurya Manam Achala Pratishtam. Yeah. So, I think Prabhupada translates it as incessant flow of desires. Yes. Right? So, I think Ramanuja Charya's translation is uh, Sukha and Dukha. Yes. So, what's the connection or like, you know, how are they actually related? Yes. Yeah, I'll tell you. See, Ramanuja's translation is Sukha and Dukha because Ramanuja Charya is relating the last four verses of the second chapter. See, that Stita Pragnya, this whole section starts from 2.55, na? So, in the beginning, if you remember, I spoke about four stages of Jnana Yogi. 55 is the first stage, 56 is the second stage, 57 is the third stage, 54, 58 is the fourth stage. Okay? The first stage, what happens in 55 is not even aware of anything. He's like Prahala. 56 what happens dukkesh vanud vignamana dukkha sukha hai he knows that dukkha and sukha is coming but he is not affected third stage is what yasarvatran abisneha tattat prapya subhashivam na abhinandati na dveshti sukha dukkha is coming he knows also it is coming and he is feeling happy and sad also so you cannot even say that he is not affected but he is not affected too much so krishna counts that also as a jnana and the final stage is that of the tortoise that now to you know everything about sukha dukkha you are completely you know more external in your consciousness there is but willfully you are controlling your senses like a tortoise that is fourth stage of jnana yogi that's how ramanujari explains and he connects that to the last four verses of the second chapter so this apurya manam verse what he says is he says the sukha dukkha is like the river coming in okay so who so if a if a huge body of water comes in somewhere then if there is a small pond that will get affected right that will overflow you know that will that will become completely affected by the extra water that is coming but ramanujare here he says that this apurya manam verse is talking about the jnana yogi which krishna had described in 2.56 who is such that he has so much yoga bala that he knows sukha dukkha is coming like the person can see the rivers are coming in the ocean knows that river is coming in but ocean is not affected but it doesn't mean that the ocean is not aware that the rivers are coming so that is why he uses uh, the river in uh, the apurya manam verse to indicate sukha dukha which is uh, hitting the heart of the yogi okay so the yogi's life also sukha dukha is coming and he realizes that sukha dukha is coming but he say he is not affected by it matlab for him it is just like okay it has happened so what can be done like that make sense na Hari Bol, I don't know whether I lost him or I'm lost. But uh, okay, so I guess okay, yeah. Uh, Nitin Sharma, bro, you had something? Oh, 
Hare Krishna, Baba Ji. Hare Krishna. Uh, no, one second. Just one second. Uh, I, I'll just unmute uh, our Dhenu Bandhu Prabhu. Yeah. What? Yes, Prabhu Ji. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It was not allowing me to unmute. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Yeah, Nitin Prabhu, go ahead. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhu ji. generally we say about the contemplation on the Paramatma aspect, but here the point was coming on contemplating on the Jivatma. So how to uh, contemplate on Jivatma point, I am not yeah, understanding. Very good, very good. See, the Jnana Yogi part, na, Jnana Yogi meditates on Jivatma only. Even the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, na, it is talking about that, that it is about Jivatma. And this is spoken in Patanjali Yoga Sutras also. Okay, Patanjali Yoga Sutras also study, he talks about meditating on the self. Now as Vaishnavas, we are not interested in that because for us, we want to meditate on Krishna. Okay, because we, we have understood that it, it is superior, you know, in terms of quality of pleasure to meditate on Krishna. Okay, and uh, so we are not interested simply to meditate on oneself. We would rather meditate on Krishna. Okay, which is which is considered higher even so so that's why i did the sixth chapter correct in the sixth chapter if you remember the last verse what is krishna saying among all yogis one who meditates on me is the highest okay so so we know that so 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 as devotees when we read these sections what we should understand is the bhagavad gita now is very very accommodative the bhagavad gita is actually accommodating all these people it is accommodating impersonalist. It is accommodating jnana yogis. It is accommodating them. The, that's why Bhagavad Gita is a very universal scripture in India. It that all acharyas, all sampradayas, they will find shelter in Bhagavad Gita because there are so many verses in the Gita which are talking about what they are doing. Because Krishna has Krishna in the Gita, you know, he has like kept a buffet. He has kept so many things, and he has said, "Come on, you choose what you want. Do something at least." Right, and Krishna's main focus is dharma, where the swadharma part of Arjuna he wants him. But from the perspective of self realization or yoga, Krishna has kept all options open. Right, Krishna has not said that hey, this is very bad, you know, don't do this. Krishna has condemned only demonic qualities, but he has not condemned this type of uh, meditation or something. He has said, obviously, this is superior, it is better to meditate on me, you know, that's kind of higher in realization and pleasure and everything. But if somebody wants, he can do that. So meditating on the self means, so you have to study Patanjali Yoga Sutras for that. But even the sixth chapter, all these verses, these commentaries are there, where meditating on the self means just that. That means even if someone meditates on himself, and I'm not recommending that we do it, because as devotees, we would rather meditate on Krishna's holy name while chanting. But if somebody wants to do, right, he has to sit uh, in, uh, in that, that whole sixth chapter method sit in that pose of Jnana Yoga, that uh, sit properly in an asana and right, pull all the senses internally and focus his mind on the self, on the Atma, that I exist. Okay, I am existing in this body different than this body and mind. I am sitting inside and just focusing on that. So this is possible. This is what Patanjali also says and that is what is also being touched here. So okay, as I said, we are not interested in it, but that method of self-realization is quote-unquote bona fide. Are you getting the point? Yes, Prabhuji. So as devotees, we may not do it, but that doesn't mean that the method is wrong. Method is correct only. Yes, Prabhuji. Because we would rather meditate on Krishna's holy name. Why should we sit and meditate on ourselves? Correct. Like that. Okay, Roji. And probably second point is that uh, is there any authentic uh, English book for that commentary of Ramanuj Dari on uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita so that we can... No, they don't. It? Actually, what they do, na, they believe, uh, I mean, that's their lookout, but uh, I mean, their stance is that these things are to be taught by teacher to student. So okay, they okay. Read books on it. Uh, so I have been learning from one teacher, so... You know, okay. Like okay. We are also fortunate that we have got you and we are learning from you. Yeah. So we also understand this, right? Even Prabhupada in first canto one purport, he says that hearing is more important than reading. I don't know whether you remember reading that purport, but there is one purport in the first canto where Prabhupada writes this point that hearing is more important than reading. Because in reading, uh, what would happen is somebody tries to read the verses of the Gita or Bhagavat or any scripture. He, he, they are limited how much he can understand. But Acharya, they have given so much already. So, and that we have to hear. There has to be a discussion, right? Only then we get it. So, that is how it is. Okay, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hari Bhav.
Yeah, last one. I think Sarakrepo again raised his hand, so I'll just unmute him. Yeah, go ahead, please. No, yeah, only you just mentioned that. I mean, uh, Krishna is giving a lot of options, but also in two point six one, I mean, like he is just. Uh, I think uh, giving only one option that I mean, like one, you have to come to me to get out of this deadlock. Yeah. So how, how I mean, like uh, doesn't I mean like uh, other people get uh, confused with that? I mean, no. like, for yeah. devotees it's easy, but yeah, for others, is easy, but for others, yeah, good point you're making. See, the point is now, uh, all these other yogis also they have to use bhakti as a tool for them. This is a fact actually. Bhakti cannot be ignored by anyone. That means the jnani also uses bhakti for his progress, which is a fact. They have to. Okay, and, and that is what Krishna is talking. So that 2.61 is not actually technically bhakti yoga. Okay, bhakti yoga is going to come in the 12th chapter. But Krishna is simply making the fact of matter clear that if you want to break a deadlock, then focusing on me is an easy option. So somebody may say, I don't want to focus on Krishna. I will fight against the deadlock and achieve. He may achieve. He may achieve also. And Krishna will not become angry and say, eh, what nonsense. Without focusing on me, you achieve self-realization, I'm going to curse you now. No, he will not do that. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, it becomes more easier when you get some higher taste from Krishna to control your senses. And Krishna has given that as a tool for the Jnana Yogi, which many Jnana Yogis may use. That's why we sometimes see that impersonalist also they also connect to bhakti, right? But their yeah. purpose is not bhakti. That means if you ask the impersonalist, he will not say that I want to go to the spiritual world. No, no, he is not interested in all that. He wants his Brahman realization only. But he uses bhakti as a tool for that, which Krishna has authenticated in 2.61. He has said you can use it. It's there for you also. I mean, we can really appreciate the magnanimity of Krishna, right? He is like, come on, even if you don't want to come to me, I will give you some component of mine as a help for you. So that you can come. I mean, who will do this? I mean, any other god would have said that, Array, you are not thinking about me, get lost. I will curse you more. So Krishna doesn't do anything. This is no problem. You, you don't want to come to me? No problem. You want to go to Brahman? Fine. But if you wish, you can just you know meditate a little bit on me also so that it becomes easy for you in your sense control. So that's that's like, that's this section of Bhagavad Gita. Yes, yes, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Srimad <laughs> Bhagavad Gita, Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Jai. Gaur